you know, like Bo Burnham is somebody who uh, saw himself like consumed with irony and uh, has talked about on podcast how like it can't like that can't be the end of it. That can't be, uh-huh. uh, you know, and, and I think that comedians are really important, uh, but we are not um, the like we we are in service to philosophy um, or theology or whatever or like theologian like i mean we are i mean i am in service to people who actually say what the truth is right um Mm -hmm. and comedians are really good at pointing out lies they're really good at at humbling uh the proud um you know trashing people who think they're really important right that's that's like a and, and that is a good service to have you know like the jester is very important but the jester is not the king and uh the, this is why Trump kills, by the way. Yeah, humbling the proud. Well, I mean, and that's but why Trump kills. Trump is like a jester who became the king, right, and I don't right. think that's, uh, you know, there's some opportunity there. I mean, Trump is such a complex phenomenon, but I think that uh, that that's not a good place to be. Um, it's not good for uh, the jester to be the king. Um, it's not a good. We can at least say that it's not a good sign about where we are. It's not, well, regardless and it's, of whether you think he was the best option at the time. You know, right? And uh, he's. I mean, he's uh, he's he's smashing things. And if you have nothing else to live for, that's they're, like that's kind of exhilarating. Um, but there's no guarantee that what comes after that will be good. Um, right. There's no like. I mean, revolutions tend to just decline. Like after the revolution doesn't come like paradise it, it's mm-hmm. so uh yeah like the the chances of um th- there's an opportunity there you know with comedy and also with um trump and with uh sort of irony like to clear the way for what is to come but uh historically that hasn't gone well historically uh the the, the result is just like things get bad and stay bad for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's why we pray. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think, I think you're right. A lot of comedians are nihilistic. Um, I, uh, I, I've been through a big stand up phase where I was just obsessed with comedians. I was, I was going to open mics for a while myself mm-hmm. and doing that. Um, and uh, I, I just have I've had an opportunity to observe what are some of kind of like the the dogmas among comedians today. One of them is is kind of like you know the, the dogma of like comedy is it's about truth, man. It's about being like honest and mm-hmm. you know. And then the other one is that anything is okay to get a laugh. Yeah, basically, like it's it's all about laughs. That's it. And uh, these are somehow these somehow coexist, even though they're obviously contrary to one another. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I heard a friend of mine once said uh, this line, which is, he said, "Comedians are like the Central Intelligence Agency, like the rules of de- <laughs> the rules of decency and fair play, like only apply so long as they don't get in the way of the mission." Yeah, right. Uh, which I thought was like so such a perfect. I would say that. I mean, the, like the mission is to get people to laugh, but I think that. You know what is it that makes people laugh um and uh like what is the i I think that 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 is an interesting question where um i mean obviously your goal as a comic is to make people laugh i don't think you should try to have a a mission and then uh and then try to make it funny right so you're gonna you're gonna change people's minds about this right or you're Mm -hmm. gonna and then uh, and then, oh, I need to make that fun. I think I feel like that's the, like the Daily Show model a lot of times is where they're yeah. like, how do I push this agenda? Um, right. But 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 I think that it just comes out naturally as far as like what do you think is funny? And for me, um, I think that I think that people uh, like you know being surprised. I feel like that it's it's humbling to be surprised. And to uh, to have a comic up there who's like funnier than you, and and but who 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 is in a way training you to see the world um, in like a comedic way, and mm-hmm. and I think that's I think that can be helpful. Sure. Yeah. 
the, the the comedy landscape has just been so in the past like i don't know three or four years has just been so decimated by wokeness yeah. um i mean uh i i i mean on twitter at least i mean I, well i don't know like well i i can say about the improv scene for example i mean uh -huh. I, i'm in new york city uh i took some classes at uh ucb enjoyed it way more than doing stand-up right. in my case uh but uh ucb is for people who don't know it's like the biggest improv theater slash school in the country basically there's one in nyc there's one in la and ucb in new york does not exist anymore it basically uh destroyed it and this was before the pandemic i mean it basically destroyed itself mm. through intersectionality mm -hmm. just like just so many like different open mics for different like weird groups of like minorities or deviants sure. that it just kind of imploded uh and uh it was just kind of crazy to to see that happen um so even though so many of the people who are rebelling against that in comedy are you know degenerate or even if they're free speech guys and i've realized that i'm not really a free speech guy anymore well i think um, i think the i have the, to root for them i mean there like there's degree. there's the landscape that like that you're describing um where like you see it as like perhaps inhospitable to your brand of comedy um and but i mean i i i feel like that's just another challenge where if it wasn't that it would be something else um and the your goal mm -hmm. is to make the audience laugh i mean and yeah and uh the great success is is going into a place that's you know, or that, or that at least you see as inhospitable or that isn't, you know, tailored to your identity or your brand of, of comedy and just destroying. I mean, and right. if you can't do that, I mean, like, I'm not saying it means that somebody is a bad comic if they have a bad night, but like, if, if they you're have an sort audience of trying to, unwinnable. yeah, I mean, if you aren't able to, uh, like, go and perform for, you know, a group of people that aren't like you at all, then, um, and I think, you know, I, I've, I've learned that because I have a lot of Muslim fans and I'm not Muslim and I have performed in Pakistan and I've performed for like Muslim organizations and, and Muslim festivals. And it's, it's do, I mean, it is doing comedy on hard mode because you aren't getting, you know, people are suspicious. They're maybe a little bit tense. They don't know what you're going to say. Um, and you have to really try to figure out how do I ease them at the beginning and how do I like, uh, you know, how, how, how do I surprise them? How do I um, break taboos without like making them hate me? Um, and there's a, uh, there's an art to that. And I think there's a challenge to that. I mean, I, I think about um, Anthony Jeselnik was uh, interviewed on being on like the whole woke scene or whatever. And he's not woke, but he's like, look, I don't, I don't want my job to be easy. I want it to be uh, challenging. And um, so, if, if there's all these minefields out there because of political correctness or whatever, that's, that's fine with him. I mean, he's, uh, now he gets to do the minds, I mean, and, and dance around the minds and, and, and get, and get good at that. And you can get, um, you can get really popular and you can get famous by not being woke, but being able to make woke people laugh. I mean, that's a, that's kind of a, um, I, I think that that is, that should be the goal for anybody right Right. Yeah, the, the comic's job to de-radicalize the audience. Yeah, or <laughs> radicalize them a different way or, like, at least humble them because, I mean, if they're in their own little bubble, then they're all pretty arrogant and they think that the mm. world is this way and they, you know, comic after comic after comic tells them what they want to hear, maybe. Um, and then, yeah. like, can you do it? Can you go up there and be yourself and be funny and not uh, be like them. And if you can, it's great. I mean, I, I don't think people go to comedy shows like not wanting to laugh or like wanting, like, oh, I'm just gonna go and like sit there and, but you know, I, like you can't have, as, as a comic, you can't have a sense of entitlement where, you, where like you're mad that they didn't laugh. Like it's, mm. it's, it's kind of your fault. I mean, if you're a comic and the people didn't laugh, you have to take that on yourself a little bit. 